Hi, I'm Karen Wenzel, and you guys probably know that I am your instructor for AGR 122, Sustainable Agricultural Systems, and we are going to resume class after spring break, and spring break is over as about the time I'm making this. So I will be uploading this video shortly. So we are going to do a lesson today in apple grafting and also uh, as you probably know uh, second semester is fruit and vegetable production so we really get into the heart and soul of actually propagating vegetable species and fruit species so usually you have to we do this first and we're going to graft some apple trees and the reason we do this first is because it has to be done while uh, the, the temperatures are February, March, early April temperatures that are cool and slightly around or above freezing and not below freezing. And because you can see the apple trees kind of starting to bud out, but not quite yet. And that is like the perfect time to graft them. So this is gonna be a quick grafting demonstration and we're gonna have a couple of other things that we're going to add on to the video later as far as um, vegetable production uh, and we're going to talk about that. But first let's just go with the apples. Uh, first of all we have some supplies here and then the kind of graphs we're going to do. First supplies and originally uh, the ultimate um, the apple grafting kit was probably a bone knife or a stone tool of some sort because people have been growing and grafting apples for a very, very, very long time. Uh, apple trees in the genus Malus are, sent, are um, from Central Asia, um, Tajikistan, um, places like that, uh, and all, have spread all through the world basically because they're such an awesome and reliable fruit species. Uh, there are whole forests of them, as a matter of fact, uh, with an incredible amount of biodiversity in their genetic stock. So, um, like, I, like I was saying, the first grafting tools were, guess what, these grafting knives. And one of the things that is really characteristic of a grafting knife, it is curved to be able and enable a person to make very accurate cuts in, as you have noticed that apple sticks and or rootstock and cyanwood are curvilinear so it makes it easier to slice into um, the, the woody bark sections of an apple cyan or an apple rootstock. So uh, first and the next thing we're going to talk about is the cutters that go with that which are kind of if you have to do a lot of rootstock, like I will be doing, <laughs> not on camera, but I have to graft 25 trees for a project. I think I told you guys about it. It's for a permacul permaculture food forest here in Woodstock, and we're still working out the details with that. But um, bottom line is we are going to plant some fruit trees as part of that permaculture food, for food forest. And... Uh, elderberries are going to be a part of it and these 25 apple trees and I have uh, 12 rootstock pieces of elderberry which should be planted about the same time as apple cyan wood is grafted. So for the rest of the toolkit this is called a guillotine cutter and you can see this careful with your finger um, cutting power of being able to cut wood and if you're going to go through a lot of species and you're a commercial producer even if you're a really ambitious amateur hobbyist you want something where you can do a lot of grafting quickly without having to do it safely and quickly without having to do too much work with the knife although some of the old old guys really prefer to use the knives okay this is another grafting tool which cuts 45 degree angles when you're trying to put part cyanwood A into rootstock B and it cuts, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's an angle here 
angle cut right there. Okay, and it will cut it. And this is designed to be used on top of a workbench like this. And it moves so you can study it. And there's another variety of grafting tool that is similar to this bigger guy, but it, it, it cuts the um, diagonal cuts very quickly and very nicely. And it's for uh, cyan root wood that is not probably any more than, well, it's less than quarter of an inch. It's probably about three eighths. And kind of as an aside, that's exactly how the root stock is sold, is by how big the diameter is and how old the root, root systems are. Okay, so um, on to that, uh, this is an apple rootstock that I grafted a piece of cyan wood, which is a um, northern spy, and the rootstock is two years old and was ordered from a commercial nursery that made these, and this is a medium size or dwarf tree, not a, se or, I'm sorry, semi-dwarf tree rootstock with regular apple cyan wood on it. And this is Northern Spy, and we'll get to our cyan wood here in a sec. This is a piece of cyan wood, which I'm going to use to graft, and this is a selection of different apple species from a commercial orchard that we cut and part of what I'm going to graft. There are multiple different kinds of grafts that you can do, and I am going to put a separate paper into Blackboard that shows the different kinds of graphs you can do. But this is probably the most extreme graft one can do. And this is an apple tree that was cut off and had cyan wood, uh, it's called a slit graft, that was, the bark was slit and the cyan wood was cut, so the cambium meets the cambium, and it was waxed into position and this is used as a demonstration only but you can graft an apple tree like this um, after we cut the rootstock and cut the cyan wood then we how, how do you put it back together it's kind of a i <laughs> hate to say this it's almost a frankenstein process um, you take grafting tape which is kind of an interesting kind of tape it's not sticky but it's stretchy so and it sticks to itself self when you stretch it so it goes around the graft and which I did right here you can see that and um, actually after that is done this holds it together but to add another a further layer of stability in the graft we use these they look like rubber bands that are that are sliced up and um, that's exactly what they are, rubber bands, but they, they're, they're open-ended rubber bands. They're not closed-ended rubber bands, but they kind of act like, oh, a uh, cast. If somebody breaks their leg, okay, you, um, adding this, the, the piece of rubber band onto it, and it holds the graft together because this is going to be outside in a pot, so it's going to be um, exposed to the weather. So after we put the rubber band on, and we're, we're, I'm not going to do this until I get all the apple, cyan wood, and rootstocks grafted, but we use grafting wax on top of all this to really seal this to protect it from insects and um, bacteria and contamination, and it's going to encourage the cambium layers, the growth layers of the bark of the cyan wood and the bark of the rootstock to come together and meld and make the make the grass start to grow. Another thing that you'll notice on here, and this is really important, and I've learned this from firsthand experience, is that the nodules or the growth buds from the cyan wood needs to be pointed out. Now you would think logic that would that would be the case. Well, long story short, last last year we had a couple of problems with people grafting cyan wood on upside down so the needless to say the grafts didn't take although the rootstock did just fine so that's kind of uh, where we're going with this oh I wanted to show you guys last but not least this is a piece of grafting wax pretty heavy-duty and we use this little miniature crock pot to uh, melt the wax but it can be melted in a double boiler on a stove 
always, always, always use a double boiler when you're melting any kind of wax because this can be uh, a fire hazard. So, and also too, all of these supplies are available all over the internet. Johnny Select, um, companies that sell rootstocks and cyan wood and all kinds of different, you know, Apple companies, you know, Apple type supply companies. They have the grafting wax, they have the cutting tools, they have the knives. And they all, there's instruction books out there. There's videos out there. There's a lot of apple grafting videos on YouTube. And that's going to be part of the assignment. Get onto YouTube and look for apple grafting videos and elderberry um, rootstock. How to plant elderberry rootstock, which is way more simple. <laughs> but uh, I will put in a link to the elderberry um, video later. Okay, so um, what I'm going to show you guys right now, try to match the rootstock size to the cyan wood size. Uh, let's see which way this is going. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this cutter to get that diagonal cut. Oops, I almost forgot. This is another really important item that you need when you're grafting your apples. Um, it is isopropyl alcohol. Are kind of a rare commodity right now um, and what you have to do is sterilize your grafting tools so I'm going to sterilize my grafting knife just for fun and I'm going to sterilize the cutting blades on the cutter just kind of by going like that I soaked uh, the end of this paper towel with it and that will make give you a nice, clean, sterile cut. The reason we do this is that apple trees, even though they're pretty tough and they grow really well, that they are susceptible to a lot of bacteriological diseases and um, insects. They're insect-borne diseases because everybody loves a good apple and everything loves a good apple and one of the diseases that are that's especially frightening is a bacterial disease called fire blight and fire blight is uh, it's kind of like getting a runaway strep infection uh, for an apple tree so that's kind of the equivalent so once once a tree gets fire blight it's dead so um, that's why we do the sterilization. So I'm going to make this cut without cutting to the, pardon the pun, cutting to the chase here. So this may take a minute. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. So, oh, by the way, I have sterilized my hands. <laughs> I use my hand, herbal hand sanitizer. Um, so this made a, a special kind of groove, and you can actually uh, do the reverse groove. Um, so I'm going to use this one just to cut off the end of it to give, give us a fresh start here. I'm going to sterilize the blade because these blades have been used a lot, so I always, always, always do this. So I'm put this in here. And see, it cut makes a nice flat, even cut. Whoops! One more time. There we go. Yeah, there, I got it. So nice, flat, even cut. All right. So next cut is I'm going to make with this one, and this one is, if memory serves, this one's kind of difficult, but it's got it definitely has a better cutter blade on it. And if you'll see, you can adjust this, and here's the cutter blade. Very interesting. So I'm going to clean this one off. This one requires a bit of care because it's kind of sharp. Okay. Um, so. This goes on the table like this. And this can go anything like this. And so one would do this. And this would go. Well. 
been a really nice perfect cutout to graft it onto a rootstock. So I'm going to trim this off right there with using this cutter. Right? <laughs> Making a nice diagonal cut. Okay, so cyan wood, let's get another root stack here. So the root stacks come in big boxes like this with some nice happy root stack plants starter. So I have the cyan wood. So what we need to do is to use this cutter again. Well, actually what I should do is cut the end off of this so that it's not oxidized on the end and it has a nice place to start. Okay, and next we do this. On, get screw on, as they say. And I can see that the trick is to get it as close to this edge as we can. Oops. Without removing the instructor's finger. There we go. Okay, so now we have the cyan wood with its little groove, and we have the root stack with its groove. So what we do is place these together thusly, and oops, is that okay here? Yeah, I guess it is. And get as much of this together with this one as we possibly can. And I'm going to use this as like a platform so that I can get my grafting tape. And usually what I do is I tear off a piece like that and put it together. And then we just tape it up like you would tape anything up around like if you're trying to put a think of it as trying to put a pencil that you broke back together <laughs> that's kind of like what it is and you have to kind of get the two pieces started and then you go back up graft Actually, this works really well with two people. Two people, one person to hold the graft and another one to wrap it. So that's why this is a lab and we all do this together. And voila. And I think just for fun, I am going to do another graft or do some more tape just to make sure it stays. Start at this end, go up, wrap around. Kind of stretch out, come down. These things need a lot of protection, so don't be afraid to skimp on the tape. All right, breaks off there. It's nice and solid. However, 
I'm going to do my rubber band. Here's, here's the one I was using. So once again, using the cutter as a platform, I'm going to start by making, just like tying a knot, just like simple, simple knot. So it'll stay on, wrap it around a couple of times. I like to tie a knot after it's wrapped around once and then wrap it around again and then tie another knot. Okay, I'm turning it over. And if the graft is, uh, doesn't feel like it's going to stay completely together, I don't be afraid to use another rubber band as well. We have a lot. <laughs> So as soon as I get this stabilized, I will put it back in the box and put it back in the garage with the other graft so that it is kept cool. Let me move the alcohol. I don't want to spill it. And put this back in there. And then do another knot. Honestly, I have to say this is a lot like uh, trying to trying to tie your shoes with a piece of spaghetti. Uh, but eventually, if you work at it and you, and you do this a lot, you get pretty good at it. Oh, and I also have a couple of um, warning. Uh, I'm going to say this, warnings when you're doing this, and one of them is that when you're using a grafting, grafting tools, grafting knives, although it's like low on the equipment and cost factor, it is high on the danger factor. And I will relate a story to you guys, which I normally, whoops, I'm glad I put the lid back on the back on the uh, alcohol um, and the story is is um, when was it a couple of years ago we were doing this demonstration in another class I believe it was in propagation uh, and we had a bunch of students in cyanwood and fruit stacks and we were uh, the instructor this wasn't me by the way the instructor was teaching how to graft and one of the things that the person that came in to do the demonstration said it's really a good idea if you're using a grafting knife to use safety gloves i.e. Kevlar gloves and the reason is uh, and she's right and I'll show you in a minute she was right is that Because you're using a knife and how the angle that you're cutting and because the, kni the knife is curved, I'm having a difficult time finding the other. The idea is to do this really quickly because it's not a good idea to leave the rootstock drying out, even though they are there. Yes. Guess not. Remember, you can always clip off the ends of this when you're done as well. A pair of scissors would be in order. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Got it. Yes. Okay. So we'll put that with this one and another graft. Now, here's why I was talking about Kevlar gloves. Because when you are cutting, and when we had this class demonstration, we were using knives that were, oh yeah, they were like these. And this is a special kind of grafting knife, so it's really, really, really sharp on one side. And it has no, no blade on the other. And when you're holding a piece of cyanwood or rootstock, 
you have to cut it like this and you have to, the best way is to hold it towards you. So if you do that and you're not wearing Kevlar gloves, the likelihood, unless you, until you get your rhythm down, you, you will cut yourself because these, because you're pull, pulling in, it has a lot of force and needless to say, we had a couple of accidents with people slipping with their grafting knives. And uh, it required, <laughs> we used up most of the first aid kit, just taping people's hands up. Just saying. <laughs> so anyway, but that's all good. But the thing is, the whole point of this is you're, are, you're making your food forest. And now we have two graphs. Actually, this, this one should do really well. Um, where can I cut this off? Okay. So one of the things I'm going to do right now, this is a tad long, so I have two growth areas here. We don't want too much at the other end. So I am going to cut this off. Can I do this? Yeah, there we go. Here. Okay. Oh, poor apple tree. Ah. So this is it, and it's nice and solid, and it's ready to go in the pot. So we're going to do some of the potting a little later, but right now we're going to take a little break and look at some vegetables. Hi, we're back for the second part of the video, and as promised, uh, I brought um, the starts that Victor was using. You know, started in our uh, lighting lesson uh, and. When he came in in February, uh, I believe it was the 20th of February, and we have his uh, New Leaf LED light here, and these are the plants that uh, Victor brought in that we started. Um, first of all, the um, leaf lettuce, um, romaine leaf lettuce, is growing like crazy, and I actually had to harvest some because it was starting to actually grow to, go to seed. And I've been keeping water in there, and as you might guess, it ha it's using up a lot of water because there's so many leaves. And I'm actually about ready to harvest it and plant some more lettuce. Second, this is the arugula that was planted on February 20th. And look, look at it now. So it's awesome. And this is the thing, um, I'm not even sure what this is. Um, Maybe Joe can, you can email me and tell me what the seed was. But what it was is it was planted um, the following week and in the mason jar with little clay pellets. And so I didn't want them leave them there because nobody would be at school to water them. So I brought them home and put my, installed my light under my cabinet, just like I was saying. And one of the things that's really awesome is that Victor... One of the people from Victor's company, New Leaf, was on the Mike Novak show this morning, and uh, she was talking about, as you guys remember, the, this LED has like the entire full growth light spectrum that is needed for these plants. Not only that, it makes a great counter light and night light. So that's it. Oh, by the way, last but not least, we're going to have another section of the video where we're going to plant outside after I've grafted all the apple grafts and we're going to plant the elderberries and the apples but it's too windy out today to do that so thank you and i'm be back 